Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Micah Let's Plays, and guess who I am? I'm Micah, cause who else would I be? Guys, I am so excited. Today, on today's gamer discussion video, we're going to be talking about Dragon Age 4. We're going to talk about the concept art, some of the devs' conversation, but before I jump into all that juicy information, I made an intro specifically for you. Enjoy! Wink! Now loading Micah's Let's Play. I know you love me for it. Now, guys, before I jump into this information proper, I just want to address the entire Bioware team and just say thank you so much for giving us this teaser trailer and all this concept art. I, I know it's been hard, especially with the current world crisis that's going on, but the fact that you took time out of your very busy schedules to do this for us fans, I just want to say thank you. Also, guys, just so you know, about two months back, there was this event called EA Play that was done online. And a lot of fans, myself included, was very disappointed that we didn't get that much Dragon Age information, footage, or anything. But all we did get was about uh, some uh, digital imagery that we got to see. And we were all like, oh, Dragon Age. But then once the event was over, we were all kind of like, wait, that's all we got from Dragon Age. And the fact that the company heard our cry for more Dragon Age goodness and they delivered on this trailer again, that just shows their level of commitment uh, to their fans and to, the, and to the players. And I just, again, want to say thank you because, again, you didn't have to do it. Okay, guys, let's talk about this behind the scenes trailer that we got with Casey and his team. Uh, you got to see all the different devs talking about their areas uh, of what they're currently, uh, currently working on within the Dragon Age uh, universe. And it was just really nice to see Casey talk about um, Dragon Age Inquisition winning Game of the Year back in 2014. And it was just really cool to see um, him acknowledge that, but also um, acknowledging what they plan to do with Dragon Age 4. Now, when you got to see these devs, you got to see a range of different people. You got to see Mark Dara, uh, you got to see uh, Patrick Weeks, uh, and so many more uh, just talking about their what they're currently working on with this Dragon Age game. And some of the things that the devs did talk about, which I really was excited about, is how they described one thing is about the relationships. And that's something that Dragon Age has always been very good with, with creating nice relationships with the uh, with the NP, uh, with the non-playable characters, and they said they really want to make these characters seem very three-dimensional and really bring them to life to make you feel like you're really having a relationship with these characters. And we're talking about friendships as well as romantic relationships. Another thing that was touched on was, you know, consequences of choice. You know, whether someone lives or someone dies, that is really based on your decisions. And it seems like in this game consequences are going to be a really major factor in the game and remember consequences can be good or bad and then another thing that they um, touched on is that they want to make sure the characters are either loved or hated and one of the examples that the devs talked about was the relationship everyone has with Solus. they uh the guy said some people want to kill him some people want to marry him and some people want to do a little bit of both and i'm in the camp where i kind of want to get rid of Solus. But I'll touch on that later. Um, another thing going back to consequences of choices, um, for those of you who don't know, um, there was two different versions of Dragon Age 4. Uh, with the first, the original writer uh, had something called uh, Morrison. Uh, the idea got scrapped and now it got moved to Joplin or could be getting those mixed up. But now with this one, um, consequences and heist seem to be kind of a little bit about uh, seem to be kind of what they're heading in. Now, mind you, this is all speculation based on what I've learned in the past and what I've seen now. Um, and a lot of information or holes in my information uh, were filled in by Jackdoor. So his icon right here and link uh, will be in the video description for his channel. Uh, Jackdoor is a wealth of information when it comes to Bioware and Dragon Age. So if you're watching Jackdoor, yeah. 
I watch your channel. I subscribe. He has great content, people. Go check him out. And a, a lot of this information that we got was basically just, like I said, the devs just kind of just talking about what they're doing. And again, they heavily emphasize bringing these characters to life. And they really emphasize relationships. So those are things I think we should be paying attention to as more news and information comes out about Dragon Age 4. Another thing that I want to touch on was the concept art and there is a lot to unload with that because it ties in heavily with the book to Venture Nights. So let's talk about it. Okay guys, let's talk about this conception art that we got and that it is so, so beautiful. So on screen here, you're seeing is an image of what I believe to be Navara. Now it is said that Navara takes a lot from Middle Eastern architecture. Architecture, so basically, kind of like Egyptian, because they have crypts. Um, it's very, very close to the Grand Macropolis. So I strongly believe that this is Navara. Now, again, as I said before, Navara is the home of Cassandra. Now, Cassandra was a character in Dragon Age 3 Inquisitions, for those of, you, those of you who do not know. Also, Navara is also known for its death mages, so for the Mortalitasi mages. They're basically crypt keepers. Uh, and another thing that I want to really point out uh, with this that I think it is so incredible and, and important. In the book to Venture Nights, it t there's a book, there's a story called Down Amongst Dead Men. Now, in that story, and I'm not going to give away too many spoilers, but it is heavily implied the architecture has a very unique and beautiful design. So I'm really excited to see how this is going to really play out in the gameplay footage when we actually get to go and explore Navara. So again, guys, I'm really excited. There's so much history uh, in this city, so I can't wait. So on the next image you see here is an image of Antiva. Now, there are two different images of Antiva, and this is why I believe it to be Antiva. In the comic book, I believe Silent Grove, there was an image of Antiva with the way the, the mountains look, the lakes, the trees. It, to me, it screams Antiva. And for those of you who don't know, Antiva is home to uh, Josephine uh, from Dragon Age Inquisition as well. And also, Antiva is home to the crows. So the Antivan crows, for those of you who don't know, is a guild of of assassins, spies, and thieves. So I am very excited to see what's going to happen uh, in Antiva. And again, for those of you who are not familiar with the world and its history, also there is an impending uh, Canari invasion on Antiva. So again, in this conception art, it doesn't look like anything has happened just yet. But again, Antiva looks absolutely beautiful. And if this is a real location we get to explore, I cannot wait because I love Antiva. I love the fact that it has um, very Spanish style uh, culture or men and women that seem to have uh, Spanish accents. And I don't know if that's South American uh, Spanish accents or if that is from Spain. So I'm not really sure of what kind of Spanish it is, but from what I've seen from, you know, uh, Josephine, I'm really excited about it. So I'm looking forward to it, especially with the wig maker story. And that's another book in the, uh, in the book to Venture Nights. So let's move on to the next image. Okay, guys, in this next image, it looks like this may be a dwarven tig, um, because if you see at the very bottom of the screen, there's a dwarf standing there. Now, if you look at this uh, and the imagery, you see like the little glowing, um, uh, glowing lock on the door and the glowing lock, uh, glowing uh, little circles on top of the uh, pillars or, or squares. Um, it looks like dwarven architecture. And another thing that got me thinking, could this be a part of the story, The Horror of Harmac? Now, or 
if it's not that, like a dwarven tag from that, could it be from Cal Chirac? Um, and Cal Chirac is like one of the ancient dwarven uh, kingdoms. Uh, that's like further up north in Thetis. So that's what's got me a little, um, not not concerned, but more like uh, it's got me curious and asking a lot of questions. But what this door looks like, this door is absolutely gorgeous. I love the design work. I love the architecture. And it's just, oh, God, I, it's seeing this has got me asking more questions and i don't have answers to them but it's okay we will get them soon enough when the game is launched and again this is all concept art so it could change at any moment so let's go to the next image on this next image that you're seeing here is what i believe to be white's house now for those of you who don't know that is where the gray wardens are from um it looks very much like how it's always been described if you read the book last flight um, it is said to be very barren, like a desert. And if you can see on the screen, there's a picture of what it looks like a griffin to be in the architectural design. So I believe this is White House. And now we've never actually been there before. So I'm excited to see that we actually get to go to this place of the Grey Wardens. One of the other things about the Grey Wardens is that it seems like there may be a emergence of uh, griffins being brought back to life uh, or there was a stash of eggs that were found and there, there are new hatchlings. And it seems like this section, uh, this faction of Grey Wardens have cut off communications with their other brethren. And it seems like there may be a, a civil war going on within the Grey Wardens. So I'm curious to see how that's going to play out in the entire overarching narration of Dragon Age 4. Um, and how we can maybe able to help resolve conflicts with them. But again, I believe this is White Help and I'm excited to go there. I'm excited to learn about the Grey Wardens. And yeah, man, this this architecture and this these concept images are just utterly beautiful. But let's go to the next one. In this next image here, this seems to be very elven in nature. Um, because you see the elven flying ships, um, you see the flying castles, and I'm wondering, is this someplace in Tevinter? Uh, for those of you who don't know, um, Tevinter culture is very heavily tied in with elven culture and also elven magic. So I'm wondering, is this a place in Tevinter, or is this a place for the uh, somewhere in the Alluvians that the uh, that the cast uh, gets to go to? Um, or is this, uh, you know, an area for the cult of Finn Harrell? So I'm just very curious. I like what I'm seeing. And if you see in the upper uh, left-hand corner of the image, it looks like you see an Alluvian mirror. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Alluvian mirrors are basically this world's version of a teleport, uh, teleport, uh, teleportation or a portal door uh, to different uh, locations and time. Uh, not ne locations and time, but more like from one destination to the next. So I'm very curious to see um, how this image is going to play into the universe. Is Again, is this someplace in Tevinter? Is this someplace from an Alluvian mirror? So I'm very, very curious, but I do like what I'm seeing. And uh, uh, on top of that, it looks absolutely beautiful. Image that we're seeing here... I believe this to be uh, Tevinter. If not Tevinter, this may be Minrathis. Um, and the reason why I believe it to be Minrathis is that Minrathis is a city by the sea on the coast. Um, and it seems like you see a lot of different waterfalls here. Um, the place looks very mystical and magical. And then on top of that, guys, uh, Minrathis, like I said, is the capital of Tevinter, where Dorian Pavis is from, and also Mayveris. So I'm wondering, you know, is this Minrathis? Because also the only way to get in and out of this city is a magical drawbridge and the Kunari want to attack uh, the city of Tevinter and they haven't been successful thus far. Um, so I'm very curious to see this area. This is one of my favorite locations um, that have been described because I love uh, mages in the Dragon Age universe. So I really want to know how this is going to really um, 
how the city is going to be truly be realized because again as you saw in the previous image with the uh elven like ships and floating buildings some of that is supposed to be in uh in Taventer as well so i'm just curious to learn more about this and again so far minrathus i want to go to there how about that this image here looks like a gray warden fighting off a dragon um, and it looks like he's protecting, or she's protecting, because you never can tell in armor, um, a protecting a woman and her child. So that gets me to think, are there going to be more dragons, of course, in Dragon Age? Um, and why is this dragon so important? And then also, is this the, the new signs of a new blight? Or the beginning signs of a new blight? So... Uh, I, I, I'm just curious to see how this is going to play out. And not necessarily beginning signs, because if an archdemon is roaming about, that means it's it's full blight season. So I just want to know more about it. And I'm I'm very curious, but I like, I like this image. It looks really cool, very badass, and it's got me excited. Because again, I, I kind of am a fan of the Grey Wardens, so this looks really cool. Now this lovely image here... Um, it looks like this lady is maybe an Antivan crow because you see she ha she's wearing the Antivan crow mask. Um, there's crows behind her. She seems to be some type of rogue because you see she has a sword um, and some daggers on her. And honestly, this is one of my favorite of the images because it looks like the city of Antiva is behind her. Um, and also, it's very dark and mysterious. So I'm wondering, um, will she be a new party member for us or maybe? you know a contracted Antivan crow to come after our party so again I'm very fascinated to learn more about uh, this and then also there's another image of a late uh, of a similar looking female character that I'm going to touch on later but from what I'm seeing here I'm very very impressed uh, with this level of art and detail and this lady looks totally badass so hopefully you know she's a party member and hopefully she's romanceable in this image here, this looks like another Antivan crow. And I love this so much because it's like he has his arm on his sword. He's got his finger up like, ooh, girl, I need a minute. And I, I love this art so much. It looks so cool. And what it looks like he's fighting, it looks like that might be um, some type of a canary uh, beast or something. Because mind you, that thing is pretty damn huge but then it also brings me back to the antivan canary war that might be coming up so i'm very curious to see this character um i hope this character he or she is a party member um Though this artwork looked like it may be a man, but it could be a man or a woman because they're very cloaked. But I like this image. It seems like this person is going to be very funny and have a lot of sense of humor. And if they do, this is going to be one of my favorite characters. And yeah, I I'm excited about this character. And I who doesn't love a lovable rascal like a, a lovable rogue? You know what I mean? That's really funny and flirtatious. So I, I think this is going to be one of my new favorite characters as well. I like crows. How about that? Now, this handsome devil looks like he could possibly be a lord of fortune. Now, for those of you who don't know, lords of fortune are men and women that go around and they're basically treasure hunters or fortune seekers. Um, they go out and they find treasure and they just add to their own wealth. And, you know, they're not politically in one party or the other. They're just basically out for themselves and I love what I'm seeing here I love his jewelry I love his beard and I just want to know more about this character but I could be wrong this could be someone um from powers from beyond the sea so I don't know who this character may be but I do like the design I love his jewelry he looks very sexy and I I'm here for it so I want to know more about this character uh and hopefully you know he may be a party member or he may be a uh, an antagonistic character so we will find out won't we this image here has me ha asking a lot of questions why because i'm wondering what type of magic 
are these people using? As you can see, the one that is kneeling has some type of shield of triangles. And then the person next to the person kneeling looks like it may be a guy. But then again, they're in armor, so you never can tell. Looks like they're doing something, turning those triangles into a bow. And it looks like it's a light bow or an energy bow. And there's a creature with tentacle energy like tentacle arms reaching out at them so i'm wondering is this a new faction of mages or is this someone from the crows or are these elven mages even though this doesn't look like elven armor but it again there's just so many questions and if this is a new power set in the game oh my god i want to use this so bad and then it also has me wondering if this isn't some type of light energy or um, or a new type of magic is this you know the fist of the maker type of ability but now it's more like um, mage telekinesis so I'm just curious and I want to know more about it but I really like this image it looks really cool and I'm this is one of another one of my favorite images I know I keep saying it but it truly is another one of my favorite images and I, I I'm here for it how about that Okay, guys, this looks like a really fun image, and here's why. If you're looking at the image in front of you, it looks like there's some type of, uh, it looks like this might be an Antivan royal. Maybe this could be someone somewhere in Menrath, not Menrathis, um, somewhere in Navarra, because if you look at the style of jewelry and designery, it looks very uh, Middle Eastern in design. And as you can see, our party members look like they're trying to steal this, uh, this carrying case or carrying uh, uh, basket with this uh, lady inside. And it looks like the, the man in front is just like a crow and the man in the back is just like a crow and look there is a canary woman and it looks like she's intimidating uh the the carrier so she can take control of the basket but the question i want to ask most of all who is the hottie boom body in the see-through dress and them heels because them hips is talking to me and that hair is luscious so i i'm just wondering who is she is she a party member you know ma'am uh, can I get your number? Like, for real, for real? Because she got me distracted. But for real, I really like this image. Looks really cool. And all of the characters look dope as hell. So, uh, again, I'm excited. I'm really excited. And that lady's legs and hips is distracting. Okay. Now, I know y'all gonna shoot me for this. But another one of my super favorite images. Look on the screen. You see, to me, I think this is, um... I think this is Isabel, Isabella. Oh, God, I love. Okay, for those of you who don't know, Isabella is another one of my absolute favorite characters. Um, to me, she's the most attractive woman in the Dragon Age universe. I know she she got that skankness to her, and I know she she gets around. But my God, I would marry her in game because she's so beautiful and such a cool character. And I like the fact that she's a pirate, and just like me, she likes big boats and she cannot lie. How about that? And then we also see the very handsome and dashing Dorian Pavis in the water with her and if you guys look in the background there is a woman uh, with long flowing hair in a blue looking dress uh, some people think that she may be the character on the cover of Tevinter Nights but I kind of think maybe this is Mae Varys uh, with them um, and then if you also look further in the background, there is a skeleton looking character. Um, and when we get to the, the, the team up image, I'm going to tell you why I think this character is so significant. And it looks like they're being attacked because you see all of the spears flying in the water. And it looks like they're going after treasure, the glowing a uh, glowing red star could that be an uh, uh the red lyrium idol that they're going after because this picture is saying so many things but the question is what are you trying to tell us like oh my god i love this so much and uh, isabel i love her so much she's so sexy she's so cool she's just such a dope character and she's just one of the best females in the entire dragon age franchise and yes i yes this is my in-game waifu like i love her so much uh, okay let's go on to the next image 
look at this image here. Okay, so what we're looking at, this looks like this may also be in Tevinter, because if you look at the design work of the buildings, they look very Tevinter-esque like designs. There's also a very creepy looking dark figure in the background. Is this a ancient magisterior brought back to life? Um, is this one of the Ar is this the Archon? Well, it's not the Archon because Dorian's the, uh, basically in that position. Um, but who is this, you know, robed character? And we also see this character again later on, and I'll touch on that in a minute. But then also look at the party members. You have this very handsome man um, holding up his fist, which is a universal sign for stop if you're in the military. Then you see his lovely companion, a woman with a crossbow who's very beautiful. Then you see a woman in the background that's absorbing the fire. And then you see a hunk in the background who looks like a canary, a hornless canary. So I'm wondering, is this a stealth mission because again it seems like high stealth missions seem to be like a recurring theme for this version of dragon age 4 so i'm wondering you know are these potential party members and this also got me wondering will there be more than one faction in this dragon age game like there's your inquisitor team and then there's your new protagonist's team on uh, going around to venter finding allies or trying to discover what solace is up to or even trying to stop a war so again, I love this art. It looks amazing and all of the characters are absolutely beautiful. Now continuing with our journey into Venter, look at this image here guys. This image here looks really cool. Now let me explain why. If you see the guy sitting on the robotic hand, that's very cool. Um, and why I also believe this to be Tevinter, because if you look around, it's like everyone's using magic and they don't seem to be bothered by it. Then you also see people selling merchants. There's a creature in a cage. Um, there's these little stick figure men walking around. I mean, and you know that has to be magic. And then if you keep looking, that tall, dark image that was in the previous uh, photo is back but why is he there and what is he doing there you know and it, it makes you ask so many questions about this new dragon age game what is going on into venter this mysterious wonderful place full of magic oh my goodness now let's get cover a few more images and then we'll move on to our next topic now this is a badass looking team let me tell you now guys the question I want to know about these group of people, are these our new group of, you know, party members and our protagonists? Because if you look to the far left, there's a lady in a long purple dress with red hair that could have been the same crow lady with the sword. Or is this lady a mage? So I have a lot of questions, but honestly, her design looks very cool, very sexy. She might be one of my favorite party members because um, I'm a huge fan of bomb ass female characters so yes then again we get to see that canary lady again um standing there looking super sexy she could be a potential rogue so i'm very interested and i want to know more about her um, I like her design. Very cool. Um, the next to her looks like a human man who's ball headed. Um, he could be um, he could be a soldier, a lord of fortune. He could be um, and then another Antivan Crow. Like I have no idea, but he looks really cool. Then the person in the middle, I'm going to take as our protagonist. And since they're tall and have a masculine but yet feminine appearance. I'm going to say this is our protagonist because Dragon Age is known for being uh, male and female equal party members. So, I mean, not equal party members. I mean, more like um, the men and women have the same equal rights and abilities and they seem to have the same level of strength. And because our protagonist can also be male or female... This is why I think this character may be our protagonist, since they seem to be a little genderless. Um, but I do like their design. Then the lady next to uh, our protagonist has a giant-ass Glock, or maybe it's a crossbow. Um, I mean, that looks like a big old gun, but she's also very covered up. So I'm curious to know why she's so covered up. Is she an Antivan Crow? Um, is she someone else? Like, I'm curious. And then the person next to her also is a could be a crow if not a crow could be someone from the magisterium 
could be, you know, a Tevinter character. So I'm curious about that. Then you have another character that looks very tall, could be an elf or could be a hornless Canari. Even though we have a Canari woman, but hey, more Canaries is always more fun, right? And then the person to the far, far right. Now, remember that picture with Isabella? Now, that looks like a character that could be a spirit in a, hum in a, in a, in a dead body. So this is why I'm thinking this may be a more Talatasi character. Uh, um, because this might be a character that was resurrected and told to go help the party members. This could be a past Dragon Age character uh, trying to redeem themselves. There's so much uh, in this one image. And again, it, it begs the question... What are you trying to tell me? Uh, you know, what are you trying to say? And who are these amazing people? And this sunset badass walking photo. Oh my god, Bioware, you guys are, you know, you guys are just doing it. I'm loving every second of this. Now let's cover a few more images and we're going to wrap this up. Now this is another conception art of, uh, it looks like our potential party members. As you can see, the Canary woman is back. She looks like she may be a rogue. Um, then there's a the young woman in the middle, looks like a warrior type. Um don't know who she is but she looks pretty cool then you got another male character who's an elf with looks like a giant sword but his style also kind of reminds me of dorian so maybe he's from Tevinter. and then you have the very dashing man uh who has the two daggers um in your party as well and i'm wondering could he be one of the antivan crows from the wig maker story because if he is um he was he was described to have long black hair and light stubble and that's very sexy so i'm here for it so i'm wondering you know are these other party members potential party members uh that they'll be running into or are these a group of protagonists that are a part of the group of fin harrell or a part of the kunari so questions now wrapping this all up is the image that is really badass but also slightly terrifying this is Solus. Now, for those of you who don't know, Solus is, in my opinion, one of the best villains ever created. Um, I like his look. Um, and if you notice, he has like a, a sigil or a symbol on his shoulder. And in the book, To Venture Nights, they say, you know, uh, Finn Harrell's people wear like a, like a badge to show that they're a part of his cult. Um, you see he's still wearing his, uh, his wolf jaw on his neck. Um, some of his armor kind of reminds me of, uh, of Fenris from Dragon Age 2. And look at him, dudes. Like, he just looks so freaking powerful and badass. Like, if you remember at the end of, um, uh, uh, the, uh, the DLC in Dragon Age 3, he had powers where he could freeze you just by just by making his eyes flash. So it makes you wonder how are we gonna beat this guy because he seems all powerful, like a truly powerful elven deity, um, though he does not call himself one. And the other thing I'm curious about, you see the wolf next to him. So is this the uh, a scene where he can shapeshift from wolf to elf or elf to wolf? Or is this someone else? Because this image has me asking and wondering a lot of questions. So, you know, and this is why I'm in the camp of getting rid of him. Because he's too powerful as well as he is causing a lot of problems. Now, if you guys don't know about the Dragon Age storyline, if you guys want... I can do a video talking all about the Dragon Age uh, Inquisition storyline, or you can wait for my Let's Play as it comes up on the channel. So, guys, these are the images that we got that I think are utterly incredible. Um, they're inspiring. They get you asking a lot of questions. And as I said before, these images are telling us so much, but the question is, what are you trying to tell me? But remember, all of this is concept art, and it can could change and probably will change at any given moment so don't get too attached to anything but i'm not gonna lie i'm kind of down for the canary woman the black haired male crow and the lord of fortune along with that sexy lady that was in the uh that was in the scene with the the group stealing away the carrying case so uh, guys i just can't wait for dragon age 4 but with all that said i'm gonna wrap this up so we can talk about the book to venture nights
Okay, guys, let's talk a little bit about the book called To Venture Nights. Now, mind you, I have the book and I've been reading it and rereading it and rereading it because with the concept art we got to see, To Venture Nights touches heavily on a lot of the stuff because at the end of Dragon Age 3 Inquisition, uh, the Inquisitor stabs the table and says, we're going to go to To Venture. And it was basically... Um, to say Solus knows all our weaknesses um, and we need to find people he doesn't know. So this is why they're, uh, the Inquisitor is going into Tevinter. Now, for those of you who don't know, Tevinter is new territory that the Dragon Age game series is really diving into. And the book Tevinter Nights... Is, um, talks a lot about these multiple different stories within this one book. And for those of you who don't know, the character Dorian Pavas is from Tevinter. And Tevinter is where you have the Magisterium of Magi and all that other good stuff. But now, let's talk about three of the stories that I think are are very significant. One of the stories is uh, about uh, the Mortalitasi. Now, the Mortalitasi is a group of mages that are basically dealing with necromancy. And this is from the area of Navarra, the country of Navarra, where Cassandra is from. Now, in uh, Navarra, like I said, you have the Mortalitasi, and in the concept art, you saw they had very uh, Middle Eastern designs. Um, they have ancient pyramids and crypts and all that jazz, and I'm so here for it. But in the concept art, we got to see this character that looked like it was a skeleton brought back to life. Now, in this book, uh, in this specific book of the uh, of the Venture Knights, you get to know this character who was actually a dead man walking and I don't want to give away too many spoilers if you haven't read the book but this character was so interesting and you begin to understand the concept of death magic within the Dragon Age universe which I found extremely fascinating and so when you see this character uh walking about in the Dragon Age game it makes you wonder so is that a Mortalitasi mage or will we have a Mortalitasi mage in our party so Something to do with Navarra is going to be heavily influenced uh, with the game at large. And I'm so fascinated to learn more about that. And because I think Navarra is a very fascinating place, especially um, what's heavily implied in this specific story in the book uh, is the architecture. And the character in question is very fascinated about the architecture. So I, I'm super here for it. Now, the second story I want to focus focus on is called Luck in the Garden. Now, Luck in the Garden is where you get to first be introduced to a Lord of Fortune. And this Lord of Fortune was very interesting because this character was described basically as a non-binary character. And I like that because, again, Dragon Age has been known for, you know, representing LGBTQ um, characters in their in their story work. And not just LGBTQ, but also people of the cloth. Um, and they, they seem to touch a little bit Bit of everybody people of color uh, I, and that's one of the things that I really like about the storytelling but going back to luck in the garden is that this specific Lord, uh, Lord of Fortune runs into Dorian Pavis and uh, and and Maeve and, and for those of you who don't know about May she's a character who I hope we get to see in uh, in Dragon Age 4 because I really like her character and she's super awesome and I hope she's romanceable there's a whole oh my god there's so much with me I, I want to talk about but I'm gonna leave her as a non-spoken character just know she's coming and I hope she's also in our party if she's not in our party maybe she plays like an auxiliary character kind of like uh Josephine and 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 Liliana in Dragon Age Inquisition but she's awesome so but in this story um and again i don't want to give away too many uh too many uh spoilers but the lord of fortune runs into this monster that is talking about you know come and dream with us come and lay with us come and you know come and uh, be blind with us and the monster is described to be very creepy and if you saw that concept art or the um in-game footage uh that you saw that we got with this four minute trailer I am very scared to see what type of monsters we're going to fight in this new Dragon Age game. And at the end of this book, the monster was never killed. It was just mainly 
shunned or shooed away and i think this is really important to the story because i think we're gonna run into the monster again for those of you who have read the book you know exactly what monster i'm talking about um this this tentacly monster uh i think we're gonna run into this monster again and this time i think we're gonna have to get rid of it and the lord of fortune i think may be one of our party members in the future or our protagonist may be a lord of fortune and we'll you know when the game comes out uh we'll explore that a little bit more or if you guys want i can talk a little bit more about lords of fortune and some of the new factions that have come up in the game now the third and final book and i think is my one of my personal favorites in this book is called the horror of harmac now again i don't want to give away too many spoilers but in this particular book it is featuring it's very focused on uh these gray wardens that go into this tunnel and they discover some truly horrific creatures and the reason why i think this is so important is that i think it ties into one of the uh elven goddesses which is gilatharin uh gilatharin not not gilatharin gilanon is her name and gilanon uh, for those of you who know is a goddess that was able to create creatures or monsters uh when you learn about her lore now the other thing about gilanon is that uh, she was asked by the other pantheon of elven gods and goddesses to kill off her creations because they were like, yo, your monsters are becoming a problem. Can you gotta get rid of them? The only one she spared was the Hala. That's right, the Hala. She was, uh, she was one of the goddesses that created them. And then the other were the sea creatures because it says, if you read the Codex Entry, that pride stopped her hand now for those of you who are familiar with elven the elven language um solace is the word for pride so are they saying solace stopped her from killing the sea creatures now remember in the concept art you got to see all of these sea looking monsters so i'm wondering are we gonna run into these sea monsters that Gilathon made and in the heart of Harmac based on what was found in that cave and mind you uh there might be other little caves like that spread throughout Thetis that we may run into again I don't want to give away any spoilers but I highly recommend if you have not read this book and you are a Dragon Age fan or you want to know a little bit more about the Dragon Age universe you need to read this book not to mention also the Dark Horse comics uh with the Blue Wraith that was um that featured uh Fenris, uh, who was also known as the Lyrium Ghost. He was a character in Dragon Age 2. Uh he's heavily featured in this uh in that comic book along with the Red Lyrium item idol. And it's they're very good books, very good comic books. I highly recommend that you do check them out. They are worth your time and attention. So those are the three books that uh, I wanted to focus on the most. Now there is a final, uh, the final story in the book called "The Dread Will Take You," but that's more heavily on Solus, and I feel that if I talk about that, I feel I, I it would force me to to go into spoilers. But again, I I don't want to talk about that. But that that book is literally the best book. It's it's so good. It's just so good. And, and Patrick Reeks, uh, Reeks, who's the head writer for Dragon Age, uh, writes this particular story. And they did a phenomenal job. So if you're watching Patrick, love your work. Now, let's move on from that. Now, after we talk about uh, to Venter Knights. Um, let's move into some of the game in-game uh, footage that we got to see that they they were working on and developing. Okay, guys. Now we got to see a little bit of the new footage, uh, some footage of the in-game engine uh, that BioWare is working on, the Frost engine, also the the software that they use for uh, Andro uh, not Andromeda, uh, for the other game that they had. Um, image here on the screen because I can't remember the name off the top of my head. Um, we got to see some of what they're doing, and it looks like they're doing next-gen uh, motion capture. Um, you see the actors running around in the motion capture suits. One of the people look very familiar. I wonder, is that Jackdor I'm seeing? I could be wrong. 
But you get to see these people in mocap suits and are moving around. One of the things I was very interested in uh, is when you saw the Grey Warden armor and you see the character uh, with the shield and it looks like they're doing a move called Line in the Sand uh, and they're fighting off these other enemies and it seems like you get to block with your shield. So I'm wondering uh, what that got me thinking about is how are the new gaming mechanics? Now mind you, if you play Dragon Age, it's basically button push here, button push there because it is still an RPG styled game but I'm wondering do you have a few more new techniques are you able to shield bash or deflect kind of like in the legend of Zelda breath of the wild if you play with link you could do something called parry where if you time it just right you can knock things back with your shield so I'm wondering do you have those new elements and mechanics in the game because if they do I'm wondering how is this really you know because you know you have skill trees so how is this gonna play out and are they gonna maybe elaborate or extend on certain key abilities with mage rogues and as well as a uh, uh, warrior uh, that you get to play with in the game another thing that I really liked is that they emphasize on the gray wardens so I'm wondering is your character maybe a potential new gray warden uh, and for those of you who are not familiar with what's going on with the Grey Wardens, the Grey Wardens are the men and women who kill the Dark Spawn and the Archdemon in the Dragon Age universe, and that deserves its own video unto itself. But uh, going back to that information, I was very impressed with what I was seeing. I can't wait to see more gameplay footage, like real in-game uh, gameplay footage. And another thing I want to touch on is the um, is the uh, the face you get to see that's in the stone for those of you who don't know titans are very important to the dragon age universe and mythos especially when it comes to lyrium and if you guys want i can do a whole video just talking about titans and lyrium and magic and why it's so significant to this world and i have a theory about that as well but i want to wrap this video up by saying what do you guys think about the Dragon Age 4 teaser footage behind the scenes uh, that, you, that we all got the chance to see? Are you like me and you're super duper excited about it um, and you want more information, but now because you got this nice chunk of information to dissect and look at and analyze that you're a little satisfied and you're eagerly awaiting the next bit of information that we get? And if you guys are not following Mark Darrow, Patrick Weeks, or Casey uh, from the dev team of Bi Bioware, you really need to start following them on Twitter. I'll have a link to all of their Twitter accounts in the video description because I think these individuals are so awesome um, and they they write very funny stuff and they have very good content and I, I love watching and reading their information because that's information I like to consume and say, hmm, maybe this is a tip or something they're talking about uh, of the, on Dragon Age 4 or maybe Mass Effect when that comes back around. So again, guys, I am so excited about all of this content that we got and again to the Bioware team Thank you guys so much because you didn't have to but you did it anyway And again, what do you guys think? Are you excited? Um, what are some of the theories that you've been able to create from this? Um, so guys, if you enjoyed any of this content that I created today for this video, do me a favor by liking this video, subscribing to my channel, leaving me a comment in the comment section down below, hitting the notification bell so you're always notified when I'm uploading videos just for you. Then remember the golden rules of washing your hands, social distance, wearing masks, using sanitizer, choosing love over fear, being kind to each other. Remember all black lives matter and because of that i'm gonna see you on the flip side because remember micah and you we only do one thing because we live think and dream big so uh, bye wink <laughs>